Hello and welcome. My name is Ana Lucia Olvera, and I'm the Transport Senior Associate at the Science-Based Targets Initiative, and I will be guiding you through this presentation. Today, we are really excited to launch the public consultation for the revised automotive sector net zero standard. This is a key opportunity for companies and stakeholders to help refine the initial draft and ensure the standard is practical, science-based, and effective in driving net zero transformation across the automotive sector. In this video, I will give you an overview of the draft currently open for consultation, walk you through the key topics, and most importantly, show you how you can get involved and share your feedback. Today, we are pleased to be sharing an initial draft of the Automotive Sector Net Zero Standard Version 1 for public consultation. The draft outlines the proposed criteria and guidance specifically tailored for companies in the automotive sector on their journey to net zero. But before we dive in into the automotive standard, it's helpful to understand how it fits into the SBTI broader framework. At the core is the SBTI corporate net zero standard, which provides the baseline requirements for companies across sectors to set science-based targets for scopes one, two, and relevant scope three emissions. As the SBTI evolves into a formal standard setter, we adopted a modular structure in which the corporate net zero standard is complemented by sector specific standards like this one. Along with technical guidance and methods and pathways, all designed to work together to help companies reduce emissions in a consistent and coordinated way. The corporate net zero standard is currently undergoing a major revision to support more companies to set targets and make corporate climate action even more effective. This draft, the automotive standard, is the first sector-specific standard that's fully aligned with the draft version two of the corporate net zero standard. Ensuring consistency across SBTI's modular framework, its structures mirrors the draft corporate net zero standard version two and includes table in each chapter detailing how companies should apply both sets of requirements in tandem. Both the automotive standard and the corporate net zero standard updates are following SBTI standard operation proce procedures, which lays out an iterative draft drafting process for such standards, including multiple public consultations. Therefore, as the corporate net zero standard version two is updated, so will be the automotive standard. This approach ensures the two draft standards are fully interoperable throughout the drafting process and upon their final publication. Now, let's briefly look at the background. In 2024, the SVTI released the Land Transport Guidance, which consolidated existing criteria for the sector and introduced an interim approach for automakers. This allowed companies to align with the 1.5 pathway by applying 4.2% annual reductions to scope three category 11 emissions and committing to an internal combustion engine phase out. Once operational, the new automotive standard will replace the previous criteria for automakers and auto parts manufacturers. Companies that are not covered by the automotive standard should continue using the land transport guidance. Thus, automakers and auto parts manufacturers with already existing targets with the land transport guidance will not be required to update their targets to align with the automotive standard until their current targets expire, although we will encourage them to do so. Now let's take a look at the challenges the automotive standard is trying to address. The road transport sector is a big contributor to global emissions, around 22%, and its future emissions will be shaped by a combination of behavioral, operational, and technological changes. 
a big part of that comes down to how efficient and low emission new vehicles are, what kind of energy they use and the materials that go into making them. New vehicle technologies also play a role in how other sectors like logistics and even drivers themselves can contribute to meaningful emissions reductions. This standard will help guide the sector in setting strong science-based targets with clear metrics and pathways that align with the 1.5 goal. And we will dive into those details in the next slides. So now let's talk about who this standard applies to. So first we have automakers. If a company manufactures more than 10,000 vehicles a year, it needs to follow the emissions related criteria for automakers. This includes requirements for scopes one, two, and three emissions from manufacturing and for aligning their overall vehicle shares with the standard. Then we have auto parts manufacturers. If at least 20% of a company's revenue comes from producing auto parts, they fall into the standard and need to follow the relevant criteria for part suppliers. And within that group, there's a specific case for powertrain suppliers. If they meet the same revenue threshold, they also need to apply two additional criteria related to emissions from the use phase of the vehicle, and that's scope three, category 11. Companies that don't meet these thresholds can still choose to follow the relevant parts of the standard voluntarily. Otherwise, they can use the corporate net zero standard version two. When we look at automakers that also provide financial services like loans or leasing, they need to follow a different path. Usually companies that generate 5% of more of their revenue from financial activities are classified as financial institutions. I need to follow the SBTI guidance and standards related to financial institutions. But the automotive standard makes an exception. If a company falls within the scope of the automotive standard, it should still follow the corporate net zero standard and this automotive standard without having to also follow SBTI standards and guidance for financial institutions, regardless of the share of the revenue that comes from financial services. And that's because the emissions tied to those financial services like vehicle loans are already captured through the use phase emissions covered in the automaker's targets. So now let's look at some of the key components in the automotive standard. This standard is tailored specifically for automakers and auto parts manufacturers. And it aligns with a 1.5 pathways. It draws on global scenarios from organizations like the International Energy Agency and the International Transport Forum, while also incorporating region-specific policies like the EU, EU Renewable Energy Directive. For greenhouse gas accounting, the standard introduced a new aggregated emissions intensity metric. It combines scope one, scope two, and key scope three categories, such as vehicle manufacturing, use, and end of life, to better reflect the full life cycle emissions of a vehicle. Automakers are also required to increase the share of low emission vehicles in their sales while auto parts manufacturing need to start tracking how many of their parts go into those vehicles. The guidance and accounting has been strengthened with clear instructions for the well-to-wheel -well methodology, defaults, values for emission factors, and lifetime mileage, and updates for categories like purchase goods and end of life. Finally, companies must now report emissions intensity using grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per vehicle kilometer, offering a more consistent and relevant metric for the sector. And as I mentioned earlier, the greenhouse gas accounting boundary for automakers brings together emissions from scope one, scope two, and the most relevant scope three categories. 
This is captured through a new aggregated emissions intensity indicator, which is illustrated in the figure on this slide. In this figure, you can see how these emissions are distributed across the vehicle life cycle. It starts with scope three, category one for material production, followed by scopes one and two emissions from vehicle assembly. Then under scope three, category 11, we include the full well to wheel fuel cycle. This covers emissions from both fuel or electricity production, well to tank, and fuel or electricity use during driving, tank to wheel. Finally, scope three, category 12, accounts for emissions at the end of life stage. So before we dive into the criteria, it's important to understand its regional approach to emissions pathways. The transitions to a low emission automotive sector must involve all regions, but countries start from different economic and technological baselines. To reflect this, the standard uses region-specific pathways based on the World Bank's income categories, which are advanced economies, emerging markets, and developing economies, China region, including China and Hong Kong. This approach acknowledges the unequal access to low emission vehicle technologies across regions and aims to support a fair and achievable transition, not to shift responsibility, but to account for real world differences. Now let's take a look at the core criteria in the automotive standard for automakers. First, companies need to assess their baseline emissions and performance. For automakers, this includes applying the corporate net zero standard version two for scope one and two emissions, evaluating aggregated emissions from scopes one and two and keep scope, key scope three activities like manufacturing, vehicle use and end of life, assessing the share of low emission vehicles sold and reviewing upstream emission from purchased goods and services. When it comes to setting targets, companies must evaluate how their current performance compared to net zero aligned benchmarks. Also, they need to follow the relevant corporate net zero criteria, which require them to set targets for reducing their scope one and scope two emissions. The automotive standard also requires companies to set a target to reduce their overall emissions intensity, covering combined emissions from scope one two and key scope three categories based on total vehicle sales or registrations. In addition, companies must set specific reduction targets for scope three category one emissions and set targets to increase the share of low emissions vehicles in their annual sales, helping drive transformation in the market. Finally, to ensure consistency and credibility in public communications, Companies must use the standards approved wording when making claims about their targets. So now let's take a look at the criteria that apply specifically to auto parts manufacturers. These follow the same overall structures as for automakers, covering base year assessment, target setting, and making public claims. But there, there are a few key differences to keep in mind. First, Low emission vehicle sales share is only assessed in the base year. Unlike automakers, parts manufacturers don't control vehicle shares. So this isn't part of their target setting requirements. Second, scope three category 11 emissions, that's the use phase emissions are only assessed and targeted by companies that manufacture powertrain components. Since those, since those are the parts that directly impact vehicle use. Also, the aggregated emissions intensity targets for part manufacturers exclude, excludes category 11 entirely. And finally, instead of assessing total emissions, part manufacturers are required to evaluate emissions intensity specifically from their parts manufacturing activities. This better captures the nature of their operations and their role in the value change. This difference ensures 
The criteria are practical and relevant for auto parts manufacturers while still aligning with the overall structure of the standard. So now that we talked through the technical side, I'll move on to let you know how you can actively engage in the public consultation process on the automotive standard. The goal of this consultation is to gather meaningful input from anyone with an interest in the automotive sector transition to net zero. Your feedback is very important since it will be directly shape the next version of the standard, helping us ensure it is science-based, credible, and practical. To contribute, please complete the public consultation survey and share your insights. The consultation open today on June 12th and will close on August 11 on 2025. The survey takes as little as 20 minutes depending on the topics you choose to cover. All resources you need to respond to the consultation, including the slides I presented in this video, the draft automotive standard, and the consultation survey link are available on our automotive and land transport web page, linked in the YouTube description below. If you represent a company and are interested in piloting the draft standard, stay tuned. We'll be sharing more information soon on how to get involved through our website, newsletter, and social media channels. Thank you so much for watching. We are really excited to receive your feedback and continue building this standard together.